This evening on News Press Now on Fox 26 KNPN, former school board president Dan Colgan was sentenced today. We'll tell you how long he will have to serve in prison. And burglars hit two convenience stores last night. We'll tell you what police know so far about these incidents caught on surveillance. Warm, windy, and lots of sunshine across the area today. This will change as we head into tomorrow. We're going to see some cooler temperatures, but how long will those temperatures stick around? I'll have that in your forecast. Coming up as your news starts now. Good evening, and thanks for joining us here on Fox 26 KNPN. I'm Bob Heater. St. Joseph police are investigating two overnight burglaries at St. Joseph convenience stores. Those break-ins were reported on opposite sides of town at U.S. Oil at 22nd and Messini Street and at Culver's gas station at Riverside Road and Frederick Avenue. Now we obtained this surveillance video this afternoon from the store. It shows the three burglars. They pried open the front door of the Culver's convenience store, destroyed much of the front counter, and managed to get away with a cash drawer, but not the main safe. Now, in both cases, the businesses were closed, and at least one suspect was seen, yep, there's two of them, tipping over the front counter, doing tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. They also, as we said, got away with the cash drawer. The U.S. oil burglary was reported about 2 a.m., and with the incident, Culver's reported about an hour later, just after 3 a.m. Culver's was able to fix damage, and also open on time this morning, believe it or not. They estimate the damage in tens of thousands of dollars. Police told Culver's employees that the two burglaries appear to be the same group with the same tactics. The saga of Dan Colgan and the St. Joseph School District has officially come to an end. The former St. Joseph School Superintendent and former St. Joe School Board member was sentenced today in federal court in Kansas City to 366 days in prison. He pleaded guilty this summer to felony wire fraud for illegally increasing his reported compensation so that he could raise his future pension payments. Colgan also paid more than $600,000 in restitution. He did not speak in court or take questions from the media, but Colgan stood alongside his attorney afterwards and he gave a statement that expressed remorse and asked for closure. We hope that uh that uh, good things are in store for the school district in the future. We hope that this brings some closure to a long uh, investigation that involved a lot of other folks and a lot of other issues besides what we're in court for here today. And again, he wants uh, to uh, apologize and uh, he's ready to, to uh, accept the sentence that the judge handed down today. Colgan will turn himself in on January 3rd to serve his sentence at a location to be determined later. Tune in at 6 tonight and we will bring reaction uh, from the St. Joseph School Board. That is on NBC 21. The Livingston County Sheriff remains in the hospital just days after his re-election. Sheriff Steve Cox went to the hospital almost two weeks ago after he suffered a cardiac incident. His wife released a statement today that says the hospital staff's making preparations for his return home. He's at a Kansas City hospital. Voters re-elected Cox as sheriff during Tuesday's general election. His challenger, Eric Minconi, stopped campaigning the week before the election after hearing about Cox's hospitalization. The Federal Highway Administration has declared the week of November 14th through the 18th to be Traffic Incident Response Awareness Week. News Press Now's Nathan Elgren spoke to MoDOT and a Highway Patrol trooper today about why they want to raise awareness on the roads. It's about saving lives. I mean, bottom line, it's about saving lives, whether it's the traveling public or it's the workers that are out there. Traffic incident fatalities have increased by 7.2% since 2014, and emergency responders from MoDOT, law enforcement, fire, EMS, and the towing industry help with about 5,500 traffic incidents during an average month. I am just feet away from oncoming traffic here on I-29, and as semi-trucks and cars whiz by, it's easy to see how dangerous this environment is for the many emergency responders that work in these areas year-round. I think we get used to it. And then when you have a motorist or, or whoever it is that we're helping on the side of the road and, and they get a quick eye-opening experience, it, it's good because they, they often at the end thank us for our service and, 
and say, wow, we didn't know that this is this is so crazy out here. The easiest way to keep people working on traffic incidents safe is to slow down, give them room to work, and focus on driving. Obviously, if you see the flashing lights, the law says move over, uh, slow down. If you can't move over because of, of oncoming traffic, then you need to slow down and uh, be in control of your vehicle. Beside minimizing negative traffic incident stats, another goal of Traffic Incident Response Awareness Week is to teach other family members who drive safe driving habits. Play scenario games. Okay, so if you're driving and you see a, a tow truck on the side of the road up here, what do you think you should do? What would be some of the things that um, would make you safe, would make the tow driver safe, would make the police safe? Nathan Elgren, News Press Now. It was another pretty day in the neighbor. It was. Did you notice That's all the video, Nathan? It's a beautiful day. A beautiful in the day. Yeah. Did you notice Mr. all the Rogers. nice weather? He just got a shot of. It was really nice around yes, here today. Yes, it was. It was warm. Nathan was Windy. standing out there in the highway with those semis <laughs> blowing by. <laughs> the whole camera started shaking there, and it was windy. Oh wow! That probably didn't help. Uh, the good news is, wind's starting to die down. It is cooling because the sun is yeah. setting around the area, and. Uh, I hope you got outside and you enjoyed the warm temperatures because it's going to change tomorrow. There we go. Let's take a look at Storm Tracker. Uh, there you can see a pretty nice sunset around here tonight, but the sun is set and things are starting to cool around here. And uh, I don't know if you can see it just yet, but um, maybe not yet. There's going to be a little, oh, there it is. See that little speck right there? You can see it on the HD cam right there. That's Venus. So if you wanted to, wanted to get out the binoculars or something, you can take a look at Venus here before it sets in the next uh, probably hour or so. Let that sun get a little further south. It will here. Uh, as you can see, winds are starting to die down. The greens and the yellows here, are, our winds are starting to die down about 10, 15 miles per hour here. But we had lots of reds and oranges across here. And we did gust up to around 26 miles per hour around here today. So pretty windy. We are going to see some more breezy conditions, but they're going to be out of a different direction. It's going to be cooler because of this warm front up towards the north. It's going to dive through our area here. It's going to shift the winds, and we're going to see those temperatures drop. And they're going to stay pretty cool here even into tomorrow afternoon and more than likely. Uh, for your first uh, day for the weekend here Saturday. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So clear and chilly conditions for tonight. We're going to see a short cool down here. Only a couple days because it looks like things are going to warm back up. So we're talking about some mild conditions. Next week we'll take a look at that forecast. I'll break everything down for you coming up here in about six minutes. Bob. President-elect Donald Trump and his Vice President Mike Pence arrived in Washington this morning for their first meetings with the men that they will eventually replace in January. Trump, who has lambasted President Obama for years and vice versa, stuck to the conciliatory tone that he's been using recently after his Tuesday win. Diane Gallagher has more from the White House. President Barack Obama. We now are going to... Uh, want to do everything we can to help you succeed because if you succeed then the country succeeds. Welcoming President-elect Donald Trump. I have great respect. Uh, the meeting lasted for almost an hour and a half and it could have, as far as I'm concerned, it could, could have gone on for a lot longer. The closed door one-on-one -on -one White House meeting is a key step in starting the smooth transition between administrations. I very much look forward to dealing with the president in the future, including counsel. It is important for all of us, regardless of party uh, and regardless of political preferences, to now come together, work together, to deal with uh, the many challenges that we face. So while the two sometimes bitter enemies, who had actually never met until today, have spent years bashing one another. I mean, he finally gave the birth certificate. He should have done it a long time ago. So he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? These moments mark a public effort to put up a united front. As Trump transitions from running for office to running the office, he met with his party's leaders who control both the House and Senate. Behind the scenes, his team is reviewing thousands of resumes attempting to put together the next administration. In Washington, I'm Diane Gallagher. Americans across the country in some bigger cities are taking to the streets. They say they are angry over Tuesday night's presidential election results. Now, this was the scene in Kansas City last night. Protesters uh, were protesting the president-elect Trump and his stunning victory over Hillary Clinton. Hundreds of demonstrators marched and uh, about six and a half miles to City Hall. They were chanting angrily, not my president, and flashing anti-Trump signs. After Clinton narrowly won the popular vote, demonstrators were calling for a reform of the election process, wanting to do away with the Electoral College in favor of a simple majority vote.
Macy says it's permanently dumping Trump, his clothing line anyway. Macy's dropped the line last year after he called most Mexican immigrants, not most, but some, rapists and criminals on the first day of his campaign. The CEO, Terry Lundgren, said today that Macy's has no plans to restore it now that the election is over. He told CNBC if Hillary had a suit line, they wouldn't carry that out either because it's not a political company. He says they don't want to carry a product related to a prominent politician. Macy still carries Ivanka Trump's line, however, of clothing and accessories. Trump protesters damaged the Jefferson Davis Memorial in Richmond, Virginia. Overnight, vandals targeted these statues on Monument Avenue with anti-Trump messages. Your vote was a hate crime was spray painted on the base of the Jefferson Davis Mem Memorial. Vulgar language was sprayed onto other monuments. Police in Richmond have not made any arrests yet in the case. The statues along Monument Avenue memorialize Virginian Confederate participants in the U.S. Civil War. It's a South Side icon, and it's been missing for a few weeks. The big flag atop King Hill wasn't taken down because of vandalism. The 20 by 30 foot American battleship flag, which has flown atop King Hill since 2001, was taken down for repairs. That's according to J.L. Robertson, owner of Rupp Funeral Home and also member of the South Side Progressive Association. They take care of the flag, and he says that there were problems with uh, the large pole that the flag flies from. Recently, uh, we've had some heavy weather uh, hit the flag and it broke the cable. The cable uh, goes from the inside through the top of the uh, flag, top of the flag pole, and that holds the flag, and, you, and that's how you raise and lower the flag from inside the pole. So when the cable breaks, it's very significant uh, cable. And the big King Hill flag is the flags that uh, same size that fly from U.S. battleships. Robertson says that he hopes to have it up and flying again by Veterans Day. The St. Joe City Council is meeting with the city staff right now as we speak at City Hall and discussing the city's hotel motel tax. Recently, the St. Joe Convention Visitors Bureau requested $300,000 from that fund in order to help with the construction for their new building downtown being built. The council is listening to presentations from the Bureau as well as the St. Joe Downtown Community Improvement District who also are seeking funding assistance. We'll have more on the council's work session tonight on News Press Now. The Church Basement Ladies, they're back and preparing for the holiday season. Will they not screw it up this time? Coming up, we'll tell you how to get tickets to this funny, holly, jolly comedy. We'll be right back. And I hope you made it outside to enjoy these warm and windy conditions because things are going to cool down as we head into tomorrow. How long will it stick around? I'll let you know in the forecast. That is next.